everybody, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today is another super exciting day. I cannot wait to tell you what we're doing today. I'll tell you straight away. We're putting up a massive arch here. Um, well, it is quite big. I'll tell you the measurements. It is two and a half meters wide, one meter deep and 2.95 meters high um, and in feet that is eight foot two inches wide three foot five inches deep and nine foot eight inches high and these arches come in many different sizes in fact you can get custom um, custom orders if you want to. You will see that this video says that this is a promotion or a gifted item and that is because we really wanted a Harrod horticultural arch for this particular spot. So I approached this company and asked whether we could represent them and film a video of us putting the arch up and they very kindly have gifted us this arch. But I want you to know that I'm not promoting the product because they've approached me. It's because I truly believe that these are fantastic arches. They're beautiful. They're incredibly well made in a factory here in Suffolk in the UK. I mean, I'm not in Suffolk, but here in the UK and I really believe that this is a, a really good product and that's why I wanted to put a Harrod Horticultural Arch here and I feel so lucky that they've said yes and they've gifted us this arch. So what I'm going to show today is I'm going to show you the whole process of us putting up this arch. It's supposed to be quite easy. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos about how to do it. Um, if you know anything about Richard, um, you will know that first of all, he hates instructions. He doesn't like reading instructions. And also everything can sort of get a little bit on top of him. Whereas I'm very much the kind of person that likes instructions and I like to read them and I like to follow them. So we tend to make quite a good pairing, but it's always a little bit of an adventure when we're trying to do something like put up an arch. So we've chosen a Roman garden arch and I specifically chose this shape because it's a very classical arch for growing roses up or maybe ornamentals or often things like clematis and honeysuckle and I really think that the Tracheospernum jasminoides is going to look beautiful on this arch and also I didn't want it to look too similar to the massive gothic garden arch that we've got um, over on the main flower beds, the main exit. This um, alleyway here or pathway, this pathway, it's going to be more of an alleyway when the archway is up. Um, it leads um, down to the far beds and the far western side of our garden um, and where I'm standing here is the seating area to the patio and so I really did want this sort of entrance. I think it's going to frame the entrance really nicely. I think it's going to look beautiful with things climbing up it. These archways come in pre-galvanized extra strength square steel posts and they're really strong, they're robust, they're long lasting, they, um, they come with a matte black finish to them which I think is really nice, it's exactly what I wanted, even the bolts are black and we are planting ours into the ground, like into the soil and so it comes with an extra 40 centimetres in length to go into the soil but if you wanted to put it on a patio or a hard standing they do come, they come also with optional fixings um, that can be screwed into like a surface that isn't soil and then they wouldn't come with the extra 40 centimetres length on them. So as I've said these are really robust and made in the UK and they do come with a 10 year structural warranty. So let me show you the process of us putting this up and then I'll show you um, what it looks like when it's finished. So this flower bed here is the flower bed that we planted in an early video and this is the tracheospernum that's waiting for the garden arch. Um, I've got another one on this side here. So this is everything that came has arrived. Obviously these are the archways, it's come with a box with instructions. These are the uprights, the longer ones here. And then we've got the crossbars behind me, which you possibly can't see, the shorter ones. What we're going to do is we're going to carry it up onto the grass and start putting it up on the grass because it's a softer surface. And then we'll carry it back down here and put it up. Can't wait to get started. So we do need a couple of tools. Um, we need a soft mallet so that we don't damage any of the poles when we're knocking them into place. Um, a spirit level to make sure the uprights are actually upright and a tape measure so that we can 
um, mark the pole uh, to make sure that we get it 40 centimetres into the ground. I think it'll just slide off. I'm not sure if it will. It should do. No, because that's packed. There are only actually two. You're going to have to curve it. We already have a very interesting scenario in that with our order for this gorgeous arch. You wally. I've also ordered four massive obelisks for our garden beds and I'm going to be um, putting those up and showing those in a future video and planting some roses for them. But that's not today. So it looked like we had way too many poles and that's because Richard has brought out the poles for the obelisks. So the pile that I showed you is not what's needed for this arch. It's a lot less than that. So just ignore some of the poles that you saw. There's a slug on this one already. The first order of the day is to check that we have all the necessary pieces and we do. I've checked them off against our list. And now what we're going to do is read the instructions and start putting them together. So this is the crossbar that goes between the two arches. And what we have to do is put a little noggin that's got a screw hole in one end and we just literally just insert them into the ends of these and they should push in quite easily and if they don't that's what we need the soft mallet for i have very weak wrists so i'm going to try to put them in <laughs> and if i can't richard can take over they're really easy apparently. Up, oh, there we are. See, I've managed to get that one in without any trouble at all. This one's a little bit more difficult. Oh, there we are. I've managed. See, even I can do it with my weak wrists. And then there are two slightly longer. These are literally uh, 10 millimeters longer than the other ones. And they take these T cross sections and those also just slot in the ends. Even I can do this. I feel, I feel so strong. <laughs> I feel, I feel like I can manage something. This is incredible. I could put this up on my own. Okay, okay. Who needs riches? <laughs> I feel, I don't know. I feel competent. What's the next? Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> So, maybe I'm not quite so good at this after all. So, this is this way round. And obviously, this one needs to be the same way round. So, when you're pushing them in, make sure they're both facing the same way. Otherwise, you won't be able to put the archway up. So, this pole that I pushed these into the ends of, I've got little screws. Again, lovely black coated screws, so they're not going to stand out. And then just by hand initially, put the screw through. I wonder if I can bring you closer. It's a bolt. Then. Bolt. It's not, it's a screw. Okay, it's a bolt. So we push the bolt through the holes. So it comes out this side and then it's important to, which way's in? That way. So make sure that it's a nice level surface and not pointing up like this. And then just use your fingers initially. There is an Allen key for afterwards, but just use fingers to screw it in. And then I'm going to do the other side. Obviously Richard's racing ahead, so I'm not going to get to do very many because you know, he's a control freak and it's a race. It's a race to see who can do the most. And then I'm just using my fingers again to screw this in. I honestly feel like apart from lifting the entire thing because it's quite large, I could do this on my own. To tighten it up, we use the Allen key. I'm a dab hand with Allen keys, can you tell? I'm trying to make sure that it stays level and it's not skew if. 
I'm pretty sure what's going to happen is I will tighten these up and then Richard is going to go around after me because he won't think I've done a good enough job. I am quite weak. And he'll re-tighten everything. Obviously you don't have to stand inside this to do it, but I'm trying to film. I feel like I've done quite a good job. Can you still see me? Yes. I'm right-handed, so that's the problem. I have done all of them. He's done all of them, apparently. Pass me a screw. Nice Whilst I faffed with one, he's done the rest. He's bionic. Are you supposed to use the long handle or the short handle to turn it? So I should be holding the long bit. Apparently I should be holding the long bit of the Allen key for leverage. I feel like that's the way to knock your knuckles. It's a bit short, it's lucky it comes on legs. Now that we've done the arch, we have to do exactly the same thing with the uprights. We have to put um, these crossbars into the uprights. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to try and do one side and Richard can do the other. What I would say is it's really important to make sure that you're putting them the right way up. So if you've got the ones that go in the ground, they've got a big long blank space without any screw holes. Just make sure they're matching. The annoying thing and the only thing that I would criticise about this particular arch is that it only came with one Allen key. Now yes, I could go and get another Allen key from the toolbox, but I'm too lazy to do that. So Richard is going to be doing the Allen keys. I mean, the fact that we've hardly got anything left and I'm tidying up basically means we've almost constructed the entire arch in the space of about 20 minutes and then we can just go and bang some holes in the ground. So what we have to do now is lay the arch on its side and then attach the posts, the uprights to it and then carry it over to where we're going to be installing it. a friend. <laughs> Wait! Oh! Can you imagine if it was really this tall? We're laughing because with the extra 40 centimetres it's just absolutely enormous. <laughs> now we've got to carry it over. I don't know if I'm going to be able to film the whole of this so I'm going to try. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> wait! Wait! Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> wait! Oh! <laughs> Woo! There we go. Down. Yep, I'm down. Right, so well, you don't think I'm strong enough? Go up, 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 up. Okay. Right side up. Okay. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. Woo. So 
I'm going to show you what we're dealing with. And we knew this was going to be a little bit of an issue, but I kind of thought we would be able to get past it. So the, the bed on this side is significantly higher than the bed on this side. So we're gonna to have to hammer this one in more than 40 centimeters and possibly this one only 30 centimeters just to get the archway actually level. Okay, so all of these need to be completely vertical, otherwise the arch is not going to sit straight. And so it's really important to keep using the spirit level just to make sure that it is completely straight. You're leaning that way again. Which way? You need to bring it this way. That's in, that's in. <laughs> Okay, so we've made all four holes. We've made the ones on this side. I can't remember how deep they were. 70, 65 centimeters. The ones on this side, 30, which is slightly less than they advise, but we have got the difference which we've measured. Let's hope this works. Anyway, prepare yourself for some more laughter because this is, it's a little bit cumbersome when it's so tall. <laughs> Should we go to the right of the holes and then drop them in? Yeah, so you just need to, you need to do the twist yours a little bit. Yeah, well, so let's just go like two inches to the right of the holes and then we'll plop them in. Yeah. I'm just going to lift for the moment so that you can move yours, okay? One, two, three, go. That's like in the movies. Oh, like two centimetres too short. I think it's level. Yeah, I think it is as well. It's like that's just wishful thinking. There's only one way to tell. You hold that there and put the spirit level on it when I bring it over here. So that's not going to work. Okay. It is. Just put the spirit level on it. It says it's two and a half meters. It's got to be level. Yeah. Yeah, that's Guys, I stopped recording for a bit there because this became a feat of engineering to try and get it level uh, between the two beds. And we really had to go down quite deep on this side. So let me show you what we had to do. Rich is just tightening some of the bolts because they did come a little bit loose when it was skew if at one point because one side was higher than the other. So this is the bottom rung on this side and it's about 10 centimeters from the ground. And this is the bottom rung on this side and it's about 50 centimetres from the ground. So I think there's only 30 centimetres in the soil this side, which is not ideal. It should be 40 centimetres deep, but we'd had to make compromises because we just couldn't get any lower on this side. And I think um, it's looking good. So it's completely level now between the two sides. I think it looks pretty plumb. So as we were putting them in, some of these twisted a bit because we kept having to lift it. So we're just tightening them up to make sure they're completely plumb and straight. So this is, um, we had to make sure that it was completely straight this way and that it was completely level so that it wasn't like on a, on a tilt. So this, this is really strong and heavy. These arches and supports from Harrod Horticultural, they've got a really nice matte black finish to them. It's this square steel, it feels really strong and, you know, super long lasting. I'm sure it's going to last forever. The joints are really nice and flush. I love the way there isn't any plastic involved there. There is plastic on the inside, but it just looks really, really nice. It's in. Now we're going to go and have some much deserved lunch. And then when I come back out, I'm going to tie in the star jasmine and just sort of primp everything up a little bit and make it look super pretty. Okay, so now we're nourished 
and we've had a little rest. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in the star jasmine, the Trachyspernum jasminoides. It is eventually going to get as tall as the arch and it's evergreen and it's going to smell wonderful. It's got gorgeous little starry shaped white flowers and I think it's just perfect. I've got one on either side that we planted a few weeks ago and as I said, I'm just going to tie it in. So I need scissors and I've got some garden twine. I like using garden twine because um, it's biodegradable, firstly. Also, if you want to move it, if you've tied it in a bow, you can move it really easily. And I think it just sort of fades into the background really nicely. And the only thing to know about tying in climbers really is to cut a length of twine and then to do a figure of eight. So like an infinity, so that um, you're not just tying, I'll show you, I'll demonstrate it on the thing, but we don't want to strap the actual plant itself to the support. Um, if we do a figure of eight, then there's always like the buffer between the plant and the support um, of this little sort of crossover bit here. Does that make any sense? Let me show you what I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the plastic ties that came with the plant attached to these bamboo canes. So I don't need any of that plastic. I don't want any of that at all. There are absolutely tons of them. Absolutely mad how many bits of plastic there were. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently wrap the climber around the posts and train it the way I want it to go. So I kind of want it to fill in the spaces. So I'm going to train it this way. To do an infinity loop, we wrap it round the post, cross it over, and then tie it to the plant. <laughs> and then tie it to the plant. And that way there's always a little buffer. And then uh, what I tend to do where possible is I'll do a bow. Now you can neaten it off and do a knot and then you wouldn't see any of this. But I find that, you know, the strings just sort of fade into the background. So this is what I mean by sort of having a buffer between the stem and the post so that it doesn't rub. So that's why we twist before we tie in. And again, there's another buffer up here. Hang on, let me focus that. So again, there's another buffer up here. So we twist and then we tie the stem in. And that way um, it will never be sort of tight up against the post or and rubbing in. And this is a really good way to tie anything into any support is to always do the figure of eight so there's a buffer. So I've tied one in on this cross bar here. And then I'm going to tie this one into the upright here. Hopefully train it to go up the side. And I'm really not tying it particularly tightly. So I can take this out now. Don't need that anymore. But I can probably just take them all out. I've taken all the plastic ties off the star jasmine and I've taken the bamboo canes out that it came attached to. And what I've tried to do is I've tried to separate each branch and spread it out and sort of tie it in to train it. So um, you, it's possibly quite hard to see, but this jasmine was planted in the center of this side of the archway. And so it's all the stems are coming up here and then I've kind of spread it over this side and spread it over this side and sort of twirled it around the post here. I've spread some along the centre here. This one's coming from this side and then I've got one going up the outside here. And then on this side, over here, it's a bit lower down, 
but this one was planted, we planted it at this end, um, away from my gorgeous viburnum opulus. Um, so the viburnum is on this side of the archway. So this side is where it's planted. And so I've kind of spread it along here and twirled it up the um, up the archway here and what I've tried to do is sort of separate the strands so one goes around this way and one goes around this way and that way I'll get equal coverage hopefully on either side of the archway because I do want it to look good from both sides of the archway. I could not be happier with this archway I think it's just perfect it's actually bigger than I was expecting like it just looks more grand i don't need it to be grand it just it doesn't feel squashed at all and i think actually that's something that's really important to bear in mind whenever you're installing an archway of any kind is that you want to be able to walk through it comfortably so you have to bear in mind that plants are going to grow on both sides of the archway and so it's going to make the space in the middle more constrained narrower and so you want to be able to walk through it easily we need to be able to be bring a wheelbarrow through and you know garden equipment and stuff like that because our sheds are right over the other side past the kitchen and it just needed to feel big i mean look how big this is i can't touch the sides i literally can't touch so even if the star jasmine comes in it's still going to give me loads of room if it dangles down it's there's still going to be so much room it's not going to bother anybody no matter how tall they are it's really tall i mean i suppose if they're eight foot tall it might bother them but it's just a really nice sized archway. I'm not saying everybody has to have an archway this size. And obviously if your garden's smaller, you need to bear that in mind. But it is really good to be able to have some growing space on the inside of the archway too. And I can just imagine like when this grows, like in a year or two's time, when it's really full and lush and covered in white flowers, and it's just going to be like this little tunnel. I mean, you could put two archways and like really make a tunnel and, you know, just have it even longer. I didn't want that. I just wanted one archway, but I think it looks incredible. And when my viburnum comes into flower here, it's just going to be a really nice accent. And I'm hoping over the years that this particular viburnum is going to grow taller and I'll have less at the bottom. And it's just going to be this lovely pop of white fluff up there on this side too. Well, now we've put the arch up and I cannot tell you, we had a few laughs. Um, it was really simple to put together. The instructions were incredibly clear and I'm really grateful for that. Um, Getting it into the ground was slightly more complicated, but it's only because we were dealing with two levels. Most people won't be dealing with a different level on each side and it would be a lot simpler. It was quite heavy and cumbersome to carry and to put in place, as you saw. Uh, we nearly fell over with it. Um, so definitely it's not something, if you get one this size, it's not something you could manage on your own. Definitely you would need to get a neighbor or a friend or family member to help you. Um, but it's totally doable with two people. I really want to thank Harrod Horticultural for gifting us with this arch. We asked them whether they would be interested in collaborating with us. So we approached them because we wanted this particular archway and they were so generous. So I don't want you to think for one minute that I'm trying to sell a particular product to you because I've been paid to do that. I haven't. I loved this arch already uh, long before it was gifted to us, but it is brilliant. It's just as good as I imagined in my dreams. I'm over the moon. Richard's oh. over the moon. We're feeling so satisfied yeah, okay, having <laughs> achieved the task of managing to get it into this, you know, very uneven ground. And I cannot wait to see what it looks like in the future. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do give it a like because it really does help me. If you want to see how this archway looks in the future, then subscribe to my channel because I'll definitely be filming more about this archway in the future. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.